most of us still use some version of Microsoft Windows at home and at work and are more or less comfortable with that. Ten years or so ago, Windows held 85% of the U.S. desktop share to Mac OS's 12%. Today, Windows is down to 53% and Apple has grown to about a 31% share. The precise figures depend on who you ask, but the trend is the same. Microsoft is not really helping themselves at the moment for probably three main reasons. One, the strong-arm tactics to get Windows 10 users to upgrade to Windows 11. Two, the fact that they have decreed that otherwise quite usable hardware cannot be upgraded to Windows 11 and that you should just go buy a new PC already. Three, some of the more obnoxious changes in Windows 11 itself that have some of us scratching our heads and rolling our eyes, like enforced OneDrive on Windows 11 Home and the on-again, off-again recall nonsense. If you're thinking about changing something, I have a matrix comparing the three main choices currently available, that is Windows, Mac OS, and some version of Linux. I'm going to try and be impartial here, but just so you know, my preferences for some time have been desktop Linux, Mac OS, and Windows in that order. To be fair, Linux has a very small share of the desktop market currently, around 4% worldwide, but is widely used in servers, and particularly web servers, so don't assume that it's just a hobby operating system. Okay, so stepping off my tiny silt box, here is the good stuff. So this matrix shows the feature on the left, then Windows 11, then Linux, then Mac OS in the columns. The first one would be user setup slash online account requirements. Windows 11, yep, definitely. Uh, they've made it more and more difficult to not set up an online account to use Windows 11. Linux, no online account required. Mac OS, Apple ID recommended, but not mandatory. Gaming capability. This is probably a big one for some people. Extensive gaming support with DirectX compatibility on Windows 11. Improved gaming support via Proton in Linux, but still limited compared to Windows. And Mac is limited gaming options compared to Windows, but getting a little better. The main file system is NTFS on Windows. EXT4, which is the most common one on Linux, and APFS on Mac OS. That may not matter to you, but just noting it for completeness. Available software. For Windows 11, extensive software compatibility, because most stuff is made for Windows. Uh, on Linux, there is a large open source ecosystem, some limitations with proprietary software, particularly stuff like... Um, Adobe products, things like that, are not supported in Linux generally because it's such a small uh, share of the market. I think that it's not considered worth their time to, to, do, to do so. Uh, Mac OS, good software availability, especially for creative professionals. A lot of the Adobe stuff, you know, Photoshop and uh, other things, audio, video, are widely supported on Mac. So for ease of use for normal users, and this is, of course, subjective, but Windows 11, I mean, it's user-friendly interface, familiar to most users. Most people have grown up with Windows. Linux, it varies by distribution. It can be challenging for new users, but, I mean, there are Linux distros like Zorin OS and, um, you know, Mint with a Cinnamon desktop that are very Windows-like in appearance and in functionality. Mac OS is a pretty intuitive inter interface, um, generally easy to use, and it's very... Um, cohesive. One, one thing I should mention here is that Windows and Mac are both sort of monolithic operating systems in that you, you kind of get Windows and you get Windows. You get Mac and you get Mac. There's not too much you can change in them. The Linux, on the other hand, is sort of the opposite. It's not really monolithic in that sense. There are many distributions, versions of Linux, and within a particular distribution. Distribution is just a collection of the software that makes up the, the whole OS. Within each distribution, there are usually several desktops that you can choose from, like GNOME, KDE, Cinnamon, uh, LXDE. There are many. They each have a little bit different look and feel, so you can really customize things to work you know, the way that you prefer. That's the idea, anyway. So for processors, we're going to move it on to hardware. For processors, Windows 11 recommends one gigabyte, one gigahertz or faster with two or more cores and a compatible 64-bit processor, which will give you pretty rotten performance, but that's the minimum spec, of course. 
My Linux is much lower. Uh, 700 megahertz x86 processor, 1.2 gigahertz recommended, or Raspberry Pi or better. So you can run Linux quite well on a Raspberry Pi, which is a very small, uh, low power computer. And you can run it quite well on older uh, Windows type computers. For Mac, the Apple Silicon M1, M2, M3, or Intel based Macs, 2018 onward are recommended. For RAM, Windows 11, 4 gigs or greater. Again, that's the minimum spec. 4 gigs will give you pretty poor performance. Linux 512 megabytes minimum. 4 gig with GUI recommended. Mac 8 gig recommended. Not really specified by Apple, but now I would say this has probably been supplanted recently by the 16 gig requirement for um, Apple intelligence. Storage 64 gigs or greater for Windows, which is quite a lot. Uh, Linux, 8 gigs or more for permanent installation, and Mac OS, at least 12 to 15 gigs free space for installation. So that's your matrix. That's kind of comparing all the current operating systems, or the widely used operating systems. So Windows 11 does offer the most extensive gaming support and software compatibility, which makes it a popular choice for many users. Plus it comes installed in most PCs that you'd buy in the, the retail chain. Linux provides high customization and a robust open source ecosystem, but may require more technical expertise, which is true. I mean, you can get Linux distributions like, as I mentioned, Zorin OS and Linux Mint, which are very user friendly and, you know, basically plug and play, but some do require fiddling. Mac OS uh, gives a sleek interface and a strong integration with other Apple devices but it's effectively limited to Apple hardware, and that's important. So if you're thinking of moving from Windows, for example, to Mac, you would need to buy an Apple device. You can't, you used to be able to do, um, to install Apple, uh, the Mac OS on Intel hardware, but now it's, it's very, very tiresome to try and do that. Uh, for gaming, Windows 11 remains the top choice. Well, Linux has made significant strides in recent years, surpassing Mac OS in terms of gaming capabilities in some, in some areas. However, Mac OS is generally considered to excel in areas like professional work and does offer seamless integration with the Apple ecosystem, as I mentioned before. In terms of ease of use, both Windows 11 and Mac OS are generally more user-friendly for the average user, while Linux can have a steeper learning curve depending on the distribution choice again. At this time, I do sense a move away from Windows towards Apple. I don't know if that'll continue, possibly with some of the new uh, ARM-based Windows systems. Um, that might change as the battery life will be better for laptops and such. But I think Microsoft is just being so dumb in some of the choices they make. I don't know. We'll see. Anyway, I hope that was interesting for some of you. And we'll catch you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.